Hello, it's Ben here and welcome to this tutorial on how to make music for GB Studio using software called Milky Tracker. In this tutorial, we're going to go through the various steps to get you up and running to make your music as quickly as possible. And the first step will be to go to uh, the URL here, milkytracker.org forward slash downloads and download the appropriate version of Milky Tracker for your hardware. Once you've downloaded and, and installed it, you should open Milky Tracker. And I recommend having a web browser open so that you can cross-reference what you're doing uh, with the uh, GB Studio music tutorial page. Um, so the URL for that is, I'll post all of these in the video description, but the URL for that is www.gbstudio.dev forward slash docs forward slash music. And this is a useful reference document to have open while you're going along. And then finally, I'd also recommend that you go to uh, uh, Deirte's uh, GitHub page to download the, the template, the XM file template. And again, I'll post this link in the description below. Um, navigate here, uh, find the file uh, and download it. And we're going to be using this for doing our composition and saving and then only exporting to a mod file when our track is ready. And that's because there are issues with corrupting when you save in the mod format. But just to let you know that the mod format is what we're actually going to be using to load into GP Studio. Okay, so once you've got your template uh, file downloaded, open up uh, Milky Tracker and you'll be greeted with a screen similar to this. We're going to go through what all these various bits and pieces are. But the first thing you want to do is to open up the template, which is kind of pre-configured for working with GB Studio. To do that, you want to click on the load button and you want to navigate to that downloaded GBT template file, the XM file, and click open. And you'll then uh, have a screen that looks very similar to this. And we're going to talk through what all of the various different bits and pieces are that we need to make music. Let me just open up the reference document that I'm going to be using because I think that for somebody who's not used to trackers like I wasn't a couple of months back it can all seem very daunting and it's not necessarily intuitive how it's designed. Um, so that's open there just for cross reference. So the first thing to say is that you've got four channels one, two, three and four and that's as many channels as you're limited to to making music in for GB Studio and each of these can have a, a small limited number of instruments to make uh, sounds in them and thankfully in this uh, template document the instruments that we can use are already described here in the instrument panel so for channel one we can choose the instruments that have channel uh, one two in the names and that's the first four instruments here so whatever of these four instruments we pick they need to be used to record in the first two channels we have channel 3 with a set of instruments that uh, are entitled channel 3 and then we have channel 4 again corresponding uh, channel 4 uh, instruments there. Now I would think of these different channels as essentially being different kinds of instrument or having different functions so channel 1 and channel 2 I would think of as melody channels where you're going to have the main kind of tune and melody that's going to be kind of at the forefront of your song. Channel three, I would think of as the bass track or the bass guitar track, because that's kind of how I think about things. And channel four, you will either hear called the effects track, because this is where um, people often make uh, sort of sound effects like uh, crashing sounds and uh, various other things, uh, or the percussion track. So this is the track that we're going to use to record um, the, the drums for our song. So how are these uh, channels actually organized? What do these different dots mean? Well, we can uh, take a look at the GB Studio documentation uh, to understand that. But essentially, and I can navigate with my keyboard keys here across the different parts of each of these tracks, we have different, uh, different th these dot, dot, dots correspond to different things. So firstly, you'll see that C f th the first three dashes are the notes and the octave. So it tells the tracker what the note is and how high or low it should be according to the octave. Now, one of the things that I recommend doing is clicking on this uh, inst.ed button. So your tracker might not might look like this when you open it. If you click on the inst.ed button, you then open up a keyboard and you can press various different notes on there. Let's go to an actual 
instrument that has sounds, proper notes. So when I press on the notes, I get a sound coming out. We have the actual note that it is, and the, the number after the note is the octave. Uh, and similarly, without actually pr clicking on the keyboard, um, I can actually use my computer keyboard. Um, so I'm pressing now on my computer keyboard to, to um, play, the, play the different notes like that. Now, how do you actually record using Milky Tracker? Well, the space bar toggles between this kind of practicing and actually recording. So when you, when you press uh, space bar, the record button gets highlighted and you get a red bar. Uh, across the the line that you're currently on and you can record in uh, one of the different uh, four channels depending on uh, where you're placing your your blue cursor here and I'm moving left and right with, with the arrow keys so the first part is telling the software what the note is and which octave it's in so if I press spacebar to activate recording mode and I press for example the C3 button you will see that I've just recorded note information in the first channel, which is in the first three dots, C3. So there we have it, the note and the octave. Now what's the next piece of information that's appeared in the, in the next section? You can see there's a blue one there. And what that basically means is it's, I've actually just recorded that using the first instrument here, instrument 01. So the second couple of dots are about what instrument we're pertaining to when we're recording. Then we have uh, the next part is a volume value, which we don't actually use. I don't think that's going to be so relevant to talk about. And then the final, uh, starting with the pink dot and then the two yellow dots, are for um, effects. And these are relevant. You can see that actually the, the, the template comes, comes with some effects actually already in there. Now, how do we know what all the different effects mean? Well, you can scroll down in the document and you can find what the different effects that are available are. So here they are. So what, what's this effect that's on here? We seem to have uh, an effect starting with C, then zero, zero. So how can we find out what that means? Here in the effects box, we can see CXX is a volume level and that sets the volume of this current track to whatever number we have in there. So what it's actually doing is setting it to zero. So I think it is important that you're sort of scrolling through this template document here to figure out what things do as you go along. And you will also see that when you open up, let me just delete off this uh, note here. You can actually just right click it. Actually, I can just click undo. Um, you'll see that when you open up the template, it also comes with an effect in the um, track f in, the, in the fourth channel, and that's F07. And what do the F effects mean? Well, these are actually setting the speed. So you actually have to set the speed. Uh, what people normally do is set the speed for the whole song on the first row of the song. And the number that you put in there uh, tells the song how fast to play. And again, you can look up in the speed table how fast things are going to play. So an F7 means that in the tracker, it's going to sound around 107 beats PM and actually a little bit um, faster in game. But there we have it. That is how to open the template. And that's what the various different bits and pieces of the four channels mean. So in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about creating some drum sounds or some percussion for our song.